Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? And welcome to another video. My name is Nathaniel Morton and I am a sports performance trainer who specifies in basketball players. And in today's video, I'm going to answer the question, how do you use periodization in your training models? And if you don't know what that means, periodization is just the systematic planning of athletic or physical training. We're trying to get as big, as strong, as fast, and as explosive as possible by the most important time of the year, which is normally playoffs or championships. So we are building ourselves up with training to be the best we can possibly be by the most important time of our year or our season. So if you want your question answered in a video just like this, leave your question down below in the comment section. And if you want a free vertical jump training program, like the video right now, subscribe to the channel and comment jump, J-U-M-P, down below in the comment section of this video. And if you want to take your training to the next level, $20 a month gets you access to my advanced training programs and monthly coaching from me. Link for that will be in the pinned comment and in the description below. But let's get into it. How do I use periodization in my training models? This is how. The first phase that I ever put my athletes through is the knee strength phase. And some athletes might not need to go through this. They might already have strong knees. But if your knees hurt, for basketball players, that's very common that you will have knee pain. If your knees hurt, then there's no point in going through any of these other phases because they will hurt your knees more. The way to get your knees better is not to load your tendons with more weight than they can handle. You have to go through a knee strengthening phase first if you have knee pain. So for my knee strengthening phase, we're using loads below 55% of your one rep max. For some of my athletes, we might need to even start with body weight. If your tendons really hurt, if your knees really hurt, you need to start with body weight first. And then once body weight feels okay, then we use five pound dumbbells. And then once that feels okay, 10 pounds, and then 15, and then 20, but you don't increase the load if you still have pain. You wait till the pain is gone with that certain load that you're on, then you progressive overload to heavier and heavier weights and to harder exercises. So loads below 55%, and we are doing slow movements. Your tendons don't like extremely fast, explosive, high velocity movements. They like slow eccentrics, slow concentrics. That what, that's what heals them, that's what strengthens them, that's what makes them feel good. So when you're in the knee strengthening phase, you need to be doing slow movements, letting your knees adapt to the slow movements and build up stronger, build those tendons stronger before you get into any of the other phases. The next phase that my athletes will go through is a foundation phase. So once your knees are strong, now we have to go through a foundation phase to get your knees and your muscles strong so that they're ready for the heavy loads in the max strength phase. So this is 55 to 80% of your one rep max. So the easiest way to think about this is your squat. How much can you squat for one rep? What's the most amount of weight you could squat one time? That is your one rep max for squat. Then we are taking 55% of that number, of that amount of weight that you can squat, and we are using that for our sets and our reps, and we're moving up to 80% as we progress through the foundation phase. I hope that makes sense. Leave a comment down below if it doesn't. Also, we are doing slow to explosive movements. So we start slow. You can't just go from the knee strength phase doing slow eccentrics to automatically just doing explosive movements. What you have to do here is you have to start slow and gradually progressive overload getting faster and faster and faster as your tendons get used to it. And if your tendons are fine going a little bit fast, then you can increase the velocity even more because we want the fast movements to increase our vertical jump, but we have to work our way there first. So this is the foundation phase. This is actually nine weeks long, three weeks of eccentrics, three weeks of an isometric focus, and then three weeks of a concentric focus. And what that means is for three weeks, we are focusing on slow eccentrics while we're squatting. And then for the next three weeks, we are going down fast, pausing in our joint angle specific squats, holding it for five seconds. So a five second isometric hold and then explode up. And then the concentric phase, the last three weeks is down and up as fast as you possibly can. So that's what that means. Then we move into the max strength phase. So this is just as it sounds, we're trying to get as strong as we possibly can so that during the speed strength phase and the peaking phase, we can take the strength that we built and turn it into pure speed and explosiveness and athleticism. So for the max strength phase, 
This is 80 to 95% of your one rep max. So we are using heavy loads now, so you can see that you shouldn't get into the max strength phase until your knees are okay and until you've gone through a foundation phase. That's why I've said you shouldn't just get straight into this if you don't have strong knees and if you haven't built yourself up to this first, because chances are if you just jump straight into the heavy loads, you will develop knee pain because your knees aren't ready for the heavy loads. Then this is all explosive. Okay, so the max strength phase is explosive. This is also nine weeks though. So I do three weeks eccentric, three weeks isometric, and three weeks concentric. So eccentric focus, explode up. Then the next three weeks is down fast, hold a five second eccentric, explode up. And then the last three weeks is down and up as explosive as you can for the concentric phase. So that's the max strength phase. Then after we've built all of the strength that we can, we get into the speed strength phase. We are turning our strength into speed and explosiveness. So this is 55 to 80% of your one rep max, just like the foundation phase, but now we are doing more explosive movements. So squats would still be the same as here, but in the foundation phase, I'm doing a lot of accessory ex exercises to build strength. In the speed strength phase, we're doing more weighted sled pulls, a little bit more plyometrics, more explosive weighted Bulgarian uh, split squat jumps. We're doing weighted explosiveness exercises and speed strength exercises as opposed to just building up strength in general. So 55 to 80% of your one rep max, everything is explosive because now we're taking the strength, we're turning it into pure explosiveness. Then your peaking phase, by the way, this is four weeks long. So this, your knee strengthening phase, is going to be as many weeks as you need to strengthen your knees up to the point where you can get into the foundation phase. The foundation phase is nine weeks long, three eccentric, three isometric, three concentric. The max strength phase is nine weeks long, three eccentric, three isometric, three concentric. The speed strength phase is four weeks long, a pure speed strength explosiveness exercises. Then the peaking phase is four weeks long. Okay, so I would also have a deload week after the foundation phase and a deload week after the max strength phase, but not a deload week after the speed strength phase. If you want me to do a video on deload days or deload weeks, leave a comment down below and I can do that next. But it just means a week in between to let your CNS and your muscles recover. And we might do some jump sessions during there. Our peaking phase, we're using 25 to 55% of your one rep max, which is extremely, extremely light. So we can see the lighter that we get, the faster we can move the bar. Right here, when it's 95% of your one rep max, you can't really move that that fast. You're still trying to move it fast, but you're going to move it slower. We're building strength. In the speed strength phase, we're able to move it faster because the loads are a little bit lighter. So now we're taking that strength, turning it into explosiveness. Then down here, we are turning it into pure speed and explosiveness and athleticism. Plus, as we get lower in loads and lower in percentages, our CNS is able to recover more so that we have the highest vertical jump, so that we're the fastest, we're the most bouncy, we're the most athletic by the time that we are done with the peaking phase. So 25 to 55% of your one rep max, everything is explosive. This is where I do a lot of plyometrics. I do plyometrics through every single phase, but this is where the most plyometrics are. This is where we're doing sprints. This is where we're doing exercises that are going to be speed focused. So this is my training periodization. This is how I do it. And then after the peaking phase, we just build ourselves back up. We are basically repeating everything over. So we're getting back into 55 to 80%, and then we're getting back into a max strength phase. But the second time through, we would use different training principles. We might use French contrast. We might we might use AFSM, we might use clustering, we might use oscillatory. It's a, it, we, we do different things. We don't just get back in and do the same exact thing. We make sure we are progressive overloading every single time with advanced training techniques. But this is my training periodization. This is what I put my athletes through to peak their vertical jump, peak their athleticism by the time that they need it peaked. And this is how I get everybody as big, as strong, as fast, and as explosive as they possibly can. Remember, comment your question down below if you want me to answer your question in a video just like this. If you want my advanced training pr programs and coaching for me, $20 a month gets you access to every single program that I offer. I customize it a little bit based on your needs and I coach you through it. That will be in the pinned comment and in the description below. But other than that, leave your questions down below, subscribe to the channel, and holla back at your boy. I will see you guys in the next video.
Young beast mode from the east coast A young kid with a west coast feel And I don't even know how the west coast feel I'm from where it's cold, the city made of steel Where a lot of n****s fold, only couple keep it real right Back still, keep it real tight Keep two L's just like Cool J My heart's cold as ice cube Praying it's a good day I'm at a crossroads, but in a good way I got